welcome good morning everybody welcome to season two episode six of my podcast today we're going to discuss some chicken recipes and a couple pork recipes made with pork um there's a couple crock pot recipes today first we're going to start with a slow cooker chicken recipe um It actually sounds really good. I've never even heard of this recipe, but it is called Slow Cooker Chicken Stroganoff. I've never had a chicken stroganoff. I've only had the classic beef stroganoffs. Never even thought there was a chicken version. But this one, there is, this cookbook. And I always like to find these really unique recipes to share. So I thought, well, Chicken stroganoff sounds really unique, and here I am with it. Now, it's a very easy recipe because you just put it in the crock pot. I call it crock pot. Some people call it slow cooker. Same thing. That is one thing I have an obsession with is crock pots. I would collect all of them if I could. (laughs) I just love them, and all the different features to every one of them is just It's just so um, exciting for me. And if I could get, you know, all the crock pots and just have a crock pot collection, I would. (laughs) Um, There's got to be other people like me, guys. There just has to be. I I can't be the only one, but there's just so many cool ones out there. You can get like Nightmare Before Christmas crock pot. You can get just anything like put on your crock pot. It's just amazing. So for this recipe, you're going to need four skinless, boneless chicken breast halves, cubed. One seven-ounce package of dry Italian-style salad dressing mix. I have not tried that yet. The seasoning pack for, it's kind of like the ranch seasoning, but it's Italian dressing seasoning to make Italian dressing. But I've never tried it for flavor and anything yet. I had a recipe planned out where I was going to use it. And I haven't made it yet, but I'm I'm just really curious about what kind of flavor it gives you your dishes, and especially in the crock pot. So I'm very curious about this, and I will have to make this and come back and tell you guys what it tastes like, because I am so curious. It has to be good, because it's just like a dry Italian seasoning, really. Um, So... It has to be good, right? I don't like Italian dressing, though. But if it's just the dry mix seasoning, it might be okay. So then you're going to need one-eighth a cup. One-eighth. I didn't even know they made a one-eighth cup. I know they made, like, the one-fourth was the smallest I had. But it wants a one-eighth cup of margarine. Now, I think margarine has, like, a place where you can cut it there, so... One eight ounce package of cream cheese, one can of condensed cream of chicken soup. I love that. It has no cream of mushroom. That's why I love this recipe because I can make it. <laughs> Put chicken, margarine, and dressing mix in slow cooker. Mix together and cook on low for five to six hours. You add cream cheese and soup, mix together and cook on high for another half hour or until heated through and warm. So that's basically it for this recipe because it's crock pot. So I don't think I'm going to repeat that one because it's basically you just throw all the ingredients in. Now it does say all you do is put, just to repeat that so you know, since I'm not repeating the whole thing. You will just put the chicken in with the margarine and dressing mix and then you mix the cream cheese together with the soup somehow. You must have to like... Soften the cream cheese, I'm guessing, and then stir in your soup with it, the cream of chicken, and then you pour it in and cook. So you add that later. So that is the chicken slow cooker stroganoff. I have to try that one because it sounds so, 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 so good. Now, the next one is most people's favorites in Chinese restaurants, buffets. It's mostly their favorite dish. I know it's one of, uh, it's not mine. I I don't know why I don't like this, but it's my 
fiance's favorite dish at the restaurants, the Chinese buffets, all that. It is sweet and sour chicken. Now, um, I think this is the one he likes, the sweet and sour. Anyway, most people like. No, it's not sweet and sour. I made a mistake. I think he likes the sesame chicken. So I made a mistake. Sorry. So I don't think any of us like this one. I had it mixed up. But most, not in my family, but most people like the sweet and sour chicken. I had it mixed up. <laughs> so um, for this, you're just going to cook it on the stove, it looks like. In a flat pan that can hold chicken. And so, um, so let's see here. It looks pretty easy. Um, it looks like you do cook it on the stove. So, sweet and sour chicken. One cup of water. One cup of sugar. One cup of soy sauce. Half a cup of pineapple. Half a cup of vegetable oil. Two pounds of chicken breasts, or four breasts. Combine marinade ingredients in a flat pan that can hold the chicken. Add the chicken and turn until coated with marinade. Marinade 24 hours. Drain chicken. Then you bake it at 350 until tender. It says it can serve four. Now, I do like soy sauce. And I do like basically everything that's in here. But I don't know. Maybe I would have the guts to try it. Maybe. Um, there's only certain things I like at Chinese restaurants. But I thought I'd have this recipe in here. Because it looked easy. And I thought most people, when they go to a Chinese place, they like the sweet and sour chicken. And so we'll do that. Okay. so. That was sweet and sour chicken. Now we're going to move on to some pork recipes and um, see where we're at then. So let's go to the next page. Now the first pork one that I've seen is baked pork patties. Now the only reason why I didn't repeat the first two recipes is because they were very easy and short. Um, I will still repeat the recipes that I think need repeated, like the more um, directions and the more complicated directions recipes. These recipes aren't complicated, but some have longer instructions and longer ingredient lists. That's the ones I like to repeat so people don't miss something if they're writing it down but these easy ones they're super easy I just kind of do once so that's what I'm doing in this episode anyway and that's what I'm probably going to be doing from now on um so we can get more recipes in each episode so this one's called the baked pork patties and this one I probably will repeat so this is going to be cooked in a baking dish um so it says it has potatoes in it and then ground pork. So here's the recipe. Three cups of potatoes sliced. Half a pound of ground pork. Six patties. One 10 ounce can of condensed tomato soup. A third a cup of onion chopped. Salt and pepper to taste. In a baking dish, put a layer of potatoes, then a layer of onion. Cork patties on top, salt and pepper to taste. Pour soup over all. Bake at 400 degrees for about 45 minutes or until done. It says it makes six servings. So <clears throat> that is the baked pork patties. And I'm going to repeat it one more time. So you need three cups of potatoes sliced. Half a pound of ground pork, six patties, one 10 ounce can of condensed tomato soup, third a cup of onion chopped, salt and pepper to taste. In a baking dish, put a layer of potatoes, then layer of onion. Put pork patties on top, salt and pepper to taste, 
pour soup over all. Bake at 400 degrees for about 45 minutes or until done. It makes six servings. That actually sounds really good. I've never had like a condensed tomato soup on pork. It doesn't sound that bad. I'm not an onion fan, so I'd probably uh, omit that from my recipe, but it does sound really good. Now, um, I know last episode when we were doing the recipes, I said on some of the pages on the bottom, there are quotes. Now, this one actually has a name on it. And it's kind of neat when they made this cookbook, which my grandma was a part of, um, but she didn't type it out by any means or anything, but she helped with some of the recipes in it. Um, And she contributed her recipes, which I did on first season on this cookbook, because this is the 60th anniversary one for the radio station that she had her show on in our hometown. And I already shared her family and friends They had a family and friends section, and she put some of her recipes in there and then had us pick. So when we get to the next cookbook, which is the 50th anniversary, I don't know why I went backwards, um, there will be another section of family and friends and her recipes and then us. And so she was a part of some of this. I don't know how much. Um, I know she didn't type it. There was somebody who typed it. Bless their heart for typing this. It was a big book. And I bet it was a challenge. So God bless that person. Whoever did that did a great job of putting this together. And so we um, will go to the 50th anniversary one, maybe on season three. I was just kind of finishing the 60th. So, you know, not jump around too much. So, um, these quotes are kind of neat. Um, I don't know who had the idea of putting quotes at the bottom. Most of them are inspirational quotes. Maybe when you're cooking, they thought you needed a little inspiration in there (laughs) to read while you're, you know, if you're having a bad day or having a bad cooking day. I've had those days a lot. So this is a very, very sweet quote that is one of my favorites that I've read so far and it actually has some a name on it which I can credit which is awesome so here is the inspirational quote at the end of this page bravery is the capacity to perform properly even when scared half to death Omar Bradley isn't that sweet So if you're having a bad cooking day and you're like, oh, I don't know if I can do this new recipe. I don't know if I can wing it. I don't know if I can even make this taste good. You read this quote. And if you're scared half to death, bravery is what you you just need to be brave. It's just sweet to have these on here. So I thought I'd share that really inspirational quote. And bravery gets you through all of it, right? Life is tough. Life is very tough sometimes, and sometimes we need to hear inspiration like that. So thank you, Omar Bradley. Okay, so our next pork one is kind of a long one, um, and I will try to repeat it and be slow when I'm saying it. It is shredded pork sandwiches. And of course, you're doing it all by yourself, so you're making the barbecue sauce and everything, because usually with shredded pork you have the um you know barbecue so you're making your homemade barbecue and it looks like you're going to do this in the oven i think yes so it says you're going to place your roast in a dutch oven pan or a large kettle so that's how this is going to be cooked and This is a really fun recipe for people who like barbecue. I don't, but my man does. (laughs) So sometimes he'll want some ribs or or some barbecue. So I might save this one for, you know, a little treat for him some night. Um, So we're going to get started now. I don't want anybody to get confused on this recipe. So I'm going to go really slow and then I'll repeat it because sometimes when I'm reading, I know it's confusing. 
shredded pork sandwiches. So you need one three to four pound boneless po- pork shoulder roast. Pork shoulder roast. One and one fourth cup of ketchup. Half a cup of water. Half a cup of celery chopped. A fourth a cup of lemon juice. Three tablespoons of vinegar. Two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Can never say that. Worcestershire sauce. That's my best, guys. Take it or leave it. Two tablespoons of brown sugar. One and a half teaspoons of ground mustard. One teaspoon of salt. Half teaspoon of pepper. And 12 to 14 hamburger buns split. <clears throat> so you're going to place the roast in a Dutch oven pan or a large kettle pan. In a bowl, you combine the next 11 ingredients you pour over the roast. Cover and cook over medium-low heat for four to six hours until meat is tender and pulls apart easily. Shred meat with two forks. Serve on buns. Now, you know, you could do this in a crock pot, too. I would probably prefer the crock pot method because you're basically just baking it all day anyway, so might as well use your crock pot. I would anyway. Now, it does say it makes 12 to 14 servings. So keep that in mind. This can be a crock pot meal too um, when I repeat it the second time. So then if you're more of a crock pot person like myself, you don't have to bake and have your oven on all day. If it's, you know, then it gets hot in your house. (laughs) I, I couldn't do that. So the shredded pork sandwiches can be crock pot. Here we go. One, three, four pound of boneless pork shoulder roast. One and one fourth cup of ketchup. Half a cup of water. Half a cup of celery chopped. A fourth a cup of lemon juice. Three tablespoons of vinegar. Two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Two tablespoons of brown sugar. One and a half teaspoon of ground mustard, one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and 12 to 14 hamburger buns split. Place roast in Dutch oven or large kettle or crock pot. And then you combine all the other ingredients in a bowl and you pour over the roast, okay? Then you cover and cook over medium low heat for four to six hours or until meat is tender. And pulls apart easily. Shred meat with two forks. Serve on buns. It makes 12 to 14 servings. So that is our shredded pork sandwiches. And now we've got one more. One more pork recipe. Now this one is specifically a crock pot recipe. So now that one that we just read can be changed into a crock pot. So I like that too. This one's called the crock pot pork chops. I love pork chops and I've had them in the crock pot before and I really like them in the crock pot. I haven't done it this way though. I just kind of winged it, you know, you wing it all the time and I did it my own way and just kind of put some seasonings on them. So this is a little different method and uh, this is a long one too and so I will be repeating this and then next time. I will be doing some ham recipes, which is kind of fun. So I want to incorporate all the meats in all these episodes. So this one you will need, again, it's called crock pot pork chops. You'll need four boneless pork chops, one cup of green pepper sliced, one 14, 114.5 ounce can of stewed tomatoes undrained, Half a cup of ketchup, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, one teaspoon of beef, the beef bologna, however you say it, bullion cubes, I don't know, two tablespoons of water, half a cup of onion chopped, two tablespoons of cider vinegar, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and two tablespoons of cornstarch. So you're going to sprinkle each side of the chops with salt and pepper to taste. Place in crock pot. Add onions, pepper, and tomatoes. Stir together ketchup, vinegar, brown sugar, 
Worcestershire sauce, lemon juice, and the boiling. The beef bo- boiling cube. Well, it's not the cubes, but like the powder to it is what you want to get. Sorry, I can't pronounce it. And then you add to crock pot, cover, and cook on low for five to six hours. Dissolve cornstarch in water and stir into the crock pot. Cook 30 minutes on high before serving. Now I will go through that recipe again, and we do have another quote. Another quote to get you through your day. (laughs) So, crock pot pork chops. Four boneless pork chops. One cup of green pepper sliced. One 14.5 ounce can of stewed tomatoes undrained. Half a cup of ketchup, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon of beef, uh, the beef powder that's in the cubes, two tablespoons of water, half a cup of onion chopped, two tablespoons of cider vinegar, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one tablespoon, excuse me, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and two tablespoons of cornstarch. Yeah, you don't want to do two tablespoons of lemon juice. (laughs) It might be a little too um, sour. Sprinkle each side of the chops with salt and pepper to taste. Place in the crock pot. Add onions, pepper, and tomatoes. Stir together ketchup, vinegar, brown sugar, Worcestershire sauce, lemon juice, and the beef powder. That's in the cubes. Add to crock pot. Cover and cook on low for five to six hours. And then you're going to dissolve the cornstarch in water and stir it into the crock pot. It'll kind of thicken it up. Cook 30 minutes on high before serving with the cornstarch. Now that sounds pretty good. I'm not a ketchup person, but I know that'll surprise a lot of people. A lot of people love ketchup. I am not one of them. So our last inspirational quote to end the episode with is... Very sweet, too. These are just so inspirational. It does have a name. I will try to pronounce the name right. Um, It does say this. I am not afraid of storms, for I am learning to sail my ship. It's by Louisa May Alicott. That is so sweet. One more time. I am not afraid of storms, for I am learning to sail my ship. A lot of things to learn from that. It's getting me very emotional. It's just a really good quote. And it makes you really think about just everything. And I love that quote. I might use that for something else. (sighs) It's just so sweet. Sorry. A little teary-eyed. That is a very sweet quote. Now, that's the end of episode six. And I can't wait to get on episode seven and share ham recipes. I will see you guys next time.